Hey Kathleen and Lauren, tonight after Raising Hope, talk about a near death. This is your Fox 5 News. The Occupy San Diego protests turned violent today as officers sprayed mace on demonstrators, forced hundreds to leave, and arrested two people. Now, a deadline approaches as authorities tell them to find a new place to rally or be arrested. Fox 5's John Langler is live downtown. And John, what is the scene like there tonight? Well, certainly, Susan, it's a lot different than it was this morning. This morning, there was uh, a lot of activity. There were arrests, of course. We saw pepper spraying and a confrontation. Now you can see the group of people, a couple hundred certainly, have congregated here in the Civic Center. It's a little more festive, and actually there's been a mood of uh, democracy, establishing committees, trying to see what the next move is as that 6 o'clock in the morning deadline approaches. Stay out here until we see some changes. Friday morning, the Civic Center was rowdy. Police came in to clear tents from the public property, saying the people were breaking the law. The only thing we want is to have the tents taken down. Protesters were pepper sprayed. We are not resisting! Two of them were arrested. I'd like the police to know that we're on the same side. The tussle ended with police backing off. Protesters congregated around a solitary tent in the Civic Center. The cops don't just want to get rid of this tent. They want to get rid of all of us. Which is what police say will happen Saturday morning. The city wants to clear the area before an event starts at the Civic Center. By 6 a.m., this all needs to be gone. We have doubled our masses since earlier this afternoon, and in spite of the events and the police brutality, we are still standing here strong, and we will continue to stand here strong. As night fell, they returned to the streets. Their cries for an end to corporate greed resounded through downtown. So again, the mood here is certainly festive, but again, there's that six o'clock in the morning deadline. That is when the police have said they're gonna come back in here and take the one remaining tent, the tent that everyone is surrounding, out of here in time for the uh, theater event that's supposed to take place tomorrow. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but for now, these uh, this rally expects to go on through the night. Susan, back to you. Okay, it will be an emotional 24 hours, if not more. John, thank you very much. All of San Diego, this is your Fox 5 News. Emotional reaction to a local story that has the nation's attention. Good evening, everyone. It is a first of its kind. A lesbian couple chosen as homecoming king and queen. We do have the footage inside that dance when the announcement was made, and we'll show it to you in just a couple of minutes. But first tonight, a family goes after a sexual predator who tries to make their young son his next victim. The 13-year-old boy was at the Bahia Hotel with his mom and dad this weekend. Police say a 52-year-old man followed the boy into the bathroom three times. The last time asking the boy to meet him later in the hotel lobby. The boy agreed in order to get away, then told his parents about it. He recognized the man while having lunch with his parents in Pacific Beach. Police quickly arrested that man. As far as we know, uh, there's been no correspondence and uh, the man did not know the child. The child clearly did not know him. School your children on, on situations like this and uh, never ever meet a stranger at another location. Police are not yet releasing the man's name. He has been charged with a misdemeanor. For the second time in almost a month, a local cab driver is shot and killed while on the job. Fox 5's Rick Boone is live downtown, and he has the latest for us. Rick? Well, Susan, I'm at the uh, Fifth Avenue Grill here in downtown San Diego. This is a, a normal cabbie hangout, and normally today they're having fun, but today was a kick in the stomach for many cabbies who had one less driver at the table. During dinner, cabbies had some upsetting reading material. A special bulletin from the sheriff's department highlighting another cabbie killed on the job. Those people who you, who you pick them up, you don't know who you're really picking up. 39-year-old Jalaladeem Hamra was found by deputies overnight after his cab rolled off the road in Lemon Grove near a trolley station. At first, investigators thought he was the victim of a crash, but later discovered a gunshot wound. We have detectives from the Lemon Grove station as well as sheriff's homicide detectives, 
a sheriff's crime lab personnel assisting in the investigation. Hamra worked for Maine Cab Company, but some of his fellow drivers remember him driving for several other companies in the area. It's not known how many people are connected to his death or why it happened, but several cabbies are now mad and are again asking for more protection on the job. And coming up in about 26 minutes from now, and I'll tell you how you can help detectives solve this case. That's coming up in just a bit, Susan. Rick Boone reporting live for us. Thank you very much. This is the second cab driver to be killed in the past two months. Last month, 68 year old Mir Sadat Sahau was shot to death in La Jolla. San Diego police are still tracking down leads in the case, but they have named a person of interest. He was just an awesome kid. And it's not, it's not fair the way they killed my son. A mom grieving months after her son is murdered. She breaks down during a Fox 5 interview tonight while a community races to catch her son's killer. Now that North Park mom is getting to find the person uh, who took her son's life. Good evening, Fox 5's Rick Boone tells us where so many people showed up tonight to fight against crime. Rick. Yeah, Walter, you know, here at Balboa Park, the 25th annual Light against uh, light, light the Night Against Crime uh, run walk just wrapped up here about, oh, about 50 minutes or so ago from now, and about 3,000 people showed up, all raising money to fight crime and supporting those victims who say they want those criminals off the street tonight. I just have a lot of anger as a mother. He's my little man, my best friend. He's everything to me. A mom who's determined to find justice for the murder of her son. I, would you even hurt an innocent angel like that? You know, he told him, please don't kill me. You know, he could have just walked away. I mean, he didn't have nothing to do with this, but he was just a coward. He was just a drug addict, a gang member. Connie Mesa is still trying to survive after her son, 20-year-old Sonny Carrillo, was stabbed to death in late oh, July so by allegedly this man who cops say is still on the run and they want him behind the bars. <laughs> The case is highlighted during the 25th annual Light the Night Against Crime 5K Run Walk. Sponsored by San Diego Crime Stoppers, an agency that needs money to find criminals, they say, like Mendez. It's just so we can hope that maybe one case will be solved, or maybe one family will be helped along the path. But for Connie, even if Mendez is brought to justice, it will be a tough road ahead. Because every day, she continues to live without her son, a person she calls her buddy, who is here no more. He was just an awesome yeah, kid. Going through a lot. <laughs> and he's not, he's not. Yeah, that mom is going through uh, a lot, a whole lot tonight. And you can find out uh, more of uh, those who are wanted out there just by going onto our website at Fox 5 San Diego. Go into Crime Stoppers. There you will see the latest uh, who are most wanted, and you'll get uh, an idea what? of uh, who is uh, wanted out there by cops and how you can also help out as well. Walter? All right, Rick, thank you very much for that report. A frightening new video released tonight of the that? horrifying plane crash at a Nevada air show. Tonight, federal investigators are piecing together what went wrong yesterday in those final seconds in Reno. Good evening and thanks for being here with us. At this hour, nine people are dead and dozens more injured. The annual event suddenly turns tragic when a plane slams into the ground and the wreckage rains on spectators. <laughs> Amateur video captures a World War II vintage plane racing at breakneck speeds as it plummets near hundreds of spectators. Did you see that? He crashed. The P-51 Mustang pitched upward and then nosedived toward the crowded grandstands. Witnesses described the impact as an explosion. It just twisted and turned and wham. In the aftermath, the tarmac is sprayed with debris, scattered in the violent impact. The third aircraft uh, plummeted, somersaulted, and came straight down out of control. Pilot Jimmy Leeward wasn't just a veteran at the controls. He had more than 120 races under his belt. Just a day before the crash, he was optimistic. We're as fast as anybody in the field, and, or maybe even a little faster. Some pilots on the ground thought part of the plane was damaged prior to the accident. The NTSB says they plan to focus on that part. Even though we recovered a component, 
We don't know if it's related to this aircraft or that's what it is. The part that federal investigators are looking at is known as the elevator. It's a flap usually on the tail of the airplane that moves up and down, allowing pilots to ascend and descend. Although the NTSB says it could take up to nine months before this investigation is complete. And there's speculation tonight about just how that crash happened. And it's coming from those who know the industry the best. And we're talking about those pilots. Uh, Fox 5's Jen Carlin talked to two local pilots who have flown at Reno and know the pilot involved in yesterday's crash. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lauren Nancaro, and this is the Fox 5 News at 5. It's day two of the Conrad Murray manslaughter trial. Several key witnesses took the stand today, including Michael Jackson's personal assistant, Michael Williams, who offered explosive testimony. Williams described the day Jackson died and the phone conversation he had with Dr. Murray. Were you asked to call 911? No, sir. Okay. Did you, upon hearing that message, call Dr. Murray? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you able to make contact with him? Yes, sir. Did he ask you to call 911? No, sir. What did he say? Uh, he said, where are you? And I said, I'm downtown. And he said, uh, get here right away. Mr. Jackson had a bad reaction. Ms. Jory, please. The focus today, exactly what kind of relationship did Dr. Murray have with the late pop icon? And what part it may or may not have played in his death? Michael Jackson's family filed into the Los Angeles County Courthouse for the second day of testimony in the trial of Dr. Conrad Murray. Next on the prosecution's witness list was the attorney for AEG Live, who negotiated Murray's contract to serve as Jackson's personal doctor. Dr. Murray told me repeatedly that Michael Jackson was perfectly healthy, in excellent condition, kind of one of those, don't worry about it, he's great. But the prosecution says Murray knew otherwise. Tuesday, they played chilling recordings from Murray's phone of Jackson slurring his words in the weeks before his death. My, yo, uh, I want to say. Jackson's personal assistant testified Wednesday about a request Murray made after Jackson was pronounced dead. We were making small talk about how horrible this is, and both of us, I believe, had, you know, Terry was, was tearing. Okay. And uh, he asked, uh, he said that there's some cream in Michael's room or house, leave room, that he wouldn't want the world to know about. And he requested uh, that I or someone give him a ride back to house to get it. The prosecution is arguing that Murray routinely drugged Jackson to sleep and gave the 50-year-old entertainer a lethal injection of the surgical anesthetic propofol the day he died. But Murray's defense team says the doctor was attempting to wean Jackson off of drugs, and it was the pop star himself who administered that so fatal much. dose. Jermaine Jackson is one of the more outspoken members of the famous Jackson clan. Michael's older brother is speaking out for the first time since the trial started. The bottom line is there was a doctor present. Dr. Conrad Murray. Yeah, Dr. Conrad Murray. And when you're a doctor, you, you take an oath to do the proper things with your client or your patient. He was there to make sure Michael was okay. Even if Michael asked for propofol, the fact that it was in the wrong hospital setting, the doctor should have said no. And good evening. We are following a story that is making headlines across the country, but is happening right here in San Diego. A local girl voted homecoming king by her peers, and tonight we find out if her girlfriend is voted homecoming queen. We'll have those results. They're coming in right now. We'll have them for you in just a minute. But first, it is creepy, it is scary, and if you're not careful, it may land you in jail. The biggest Halloween party is on in downtown San Diego, and Rick Boone is live now with a warning from police tonight. Rick? Hey, uh, Susan, you know, uh, Monday is for the kids. Tonight is for the adults, and they're out in full blast. You never heard of that that song, The Freaks Come Out at Night? Well, they're, they're out here tonight in the streets of uh, downtown San Diego here at Monster Bash, and it is going crazy. Getting into the bash, it's uh, pretty much uh, you're going to have to stand in a line. Just want to let you know that. But when you get inside, when you get inside, this is what you'll see. We shot this video just a little bit earlier, and it just tells you about some of the bands that are going on and some of the creepy things you'll see inside and all the partiness that is going on there at Monster Bash. It is a loud event, certainly not a quiet one, <laughs> but but it is it is a party, and certainly that's what they're doing there at Monster Bash. 
back here live. Let's check out uh, check out some of the costumes here, which I would say that are quite risque. Uh, you know, some of the ones that we saw here a lot seem to be the Captain Jack, also Fred Flintstone, and, uh, and, and costumes like that. Now, you know, a lot of people are having a good time, but this has been a very good orderly crowd, no problems out here, and there are a lot of police officers out here, and they're pretty much keeping everybody safe. So if you wanna come on down, come down, have some fun here at Monster Bash. Hey, coming up in uh, about 27 minutes or so from now, Susan, I'm gonna tell you about uh, the trolley system. If you were thinking about taking that down here, you may wanna make other plans. Susan, back to you. Oh, that sounds like good information. Um, Rick? What are you supposed to be tonight? Well, Susan, I'm Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. Shorter hair, but right. thank you very you much. We'll see you in about 26 minutes now. Thank you.